This video is sponsored by my course, the Unreal Engine C++ Survival Course. Using my knowledge from working in the industry, we start from the basics and work our way up until we've created an online survival game with C++. We create vehicles, clothing, weapons, steam matchmaking, and much more. Get lifetime access for $25 using the link in the description. Hey guys and welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about a feature that separates a lot of novices from people that really know what they're doing and that is knowing the Unreal build tool and really just knowing the core of how the engine works. A lot of people jump straight in and they learn about actors and making vehicles and weapons and all this stuff but at the core of it all is building your game and your game is made out of something called modules so I guess we'll start with those. I've got a project open here don't worry about following anything that I'm doing um, this is pretty much all for example. But here's pretty much an empty project. This is from my plugins video. And I just want to demonstrate sort of the structure of a project, how it works. And this stuff, I really wish that I had learned this when I started learning Unreal. It would have saved me so much pain. So in about 10 minutes, you will be a much better developer, I promise you. Okay, so we're going to start with the U project file. So we'll open that up. So every project comes with a U project file. But the thing that I want to focus on here is this modules array in your U project. And right out the bat, it's listed this uh, plugin test thing. That's the name of my project is plugin test. This is actually my game. So the first thing to understand is that your game is a module. And you know something's a module because it will have a folder. And in the folder is some code and then a build.cs file. If I come up here to the engine and look at some of the engine stuff, all of these here are modules. You can see stuff like the cloth painter, the anim graph. This is the entire source code for the editor. All these folders here are actually modules. And again, we can tell that because if you expand them, you can see these build files. So that's kind of an interesting insight. The entire engine is built out of these things called modules and your game itself is a module. And uh, evidence to back that up is obviously the build file. If you go to your plugin test or whatever your project's called .cpp, you can actually see we use this macro to implement the game module. So that is actually implementing the game right there. So let's talk about the build files next. The build files are just there to specify how your module should be built. And uh, any project that you make in Unreal, this is the default build file that you'll get. And you can see that it uses four modules. It has core, core U object, engine, and input core. These are like the four base modules to get a game up and running. And you, it's pretty self-explanatory what a lot of these do, like input is for handling input. But here's the thing, these are just modules. If we go up here to the source code of the engine, we go to runtime, you can actually see these modules, core, core U object, engine, input core, and so you can go into these modules and you can look at the source code for how the input works in Unreal. If I wanted to use Slate UI in my project, I could just uncomment this. And now I'm using the Slate and Slate core modules in my project. Um, a lot of people get confused as well by private dependency module names and public depend uh, dependency module names. And uh, all that does is the public ones are usable by anything in the public folder. So you can see here, all of these files can access these modules. And then uh, the private folder is for the private dependency module names. Some really old modules have a classes folder. Don't worry about that. That's a legacy thing and you don't need to uh, be concerned with that anymore. Uh, private and public are the main ones that are used nowadays. So your game is a module. The engine is made out of modules. But surely plugins can't be made out of modules too. Well, of course they are. Everything is made out of modules. So um, here I've got this quest tool that I made called Narrative. I've included that as a plugin in my project. And if I have a look at the structure of a plugin, we'll just look at my Narrative one here. And I open the U plugin. A U plugin file looks really similar to the U project file. It just lists all of the modules that are going to be in this project. And we'll go a little bit more in depth. You can see here that there are some options for blacklisting certain platforms. So say you have a module that does some Windows specific stuff, you might want to blacklist Mac and Linux from your plugin. You can also define when uh, modules are loaded, which is pretty handy if you want certain modules to load before or after other ones. And then you have the type of module. So there's runtime modules, which are like part of your actual game. And then there's editor modules and editor modules 
uh, usually changing the functionality of the Unreal Engine. So because my Quest tool modifies the engine, it does have some editor modules in there as well. Now onto the next file that confuses a lot of people is the target file. And the target file really just lets you define different sort of ways of building for different targets. Here in my survival project that uh, is from my course, we actually create four different targets. You've got one for like the server, and you can see here we're defining things that only the server build needs to have, but then the clients that are connecting to the server, they don't need all the same information. You can see they actually get a little bit less information in their build of the game. So it kind of lets you customize the game's build uh, on a per target basis. One last thing that confuses a lot of beginners that I thought I'd just show you because it's actually pretty cool to understand how this works is you might make a server function and the uh, the server function when you implement it it has an underscore implementation and it has like an underscore validate which I'll show you now. So how is it that I can define a server loot item function but then implement it as underscore validate underscore implementation. Clearly this is breaking the rules of C++ but it actually isn't. When you build your game the Unreal Build tool works to do its thing, but it also something called the Unreal Header tool works. And what the Unreal Header tool will do is it'll see these keywords here, and then in this file here, the generated file, it does some magic. So let's have a look at the survival character.generated if I uh, right click and open it up. Here is everything that it's doing, and it's really unreadable because this is not meant to be read by humans. This is just compiler magic, uh, macros, and all that stuff making this work. Uh, but you can see here it is, it's defining all of these underscore implementations for us. Um, you can even see here it says RPC wrappers. Um, and there's so much more that it's doing. I mean, uh, honestly, I'm not sure what a lot of this does. Um, but generally, it just looks like implementations for some of the RPCs and things like that. But yeah, this is where a lot of the magic comes from. A lot of these things where you're kind of confused about how how does this work? You know, how does this work with, uh, this is totally defying the laws of C++. Well, it's actually this generated file is doing a lot of the magic. Now, what if something wrong happens in this generated.h? Well, Unreal have thought about this. If you hover over this, you can see it's in the intermediate folder. And actually, if I right click on my project, which is in my solution, remember a solution is just a bunch of projects basically. Uh, so I'm going to right click on my project here and I'll show it in the file explorer. Notice that all of the generated files and projects and everything, they're all in this intermediate folder. So if you do have a problem with this generated file, you can totally just delete your intermediate folder, rebuild your game, and these can just be generated whenever you want, right? The Unreal Header tool can just remake them. So you can safely delete these files if you think it's worth doing, if you think maybe there was a mistake and you want to regenerate them, you can totally do that. So I hope you enjoy kind of the basics. I really wish someone had told me this stuff when I started, and I feel like that's the minimum you should know. There's a ton more. For example, here's the engine build. Um, you can see, I mean, obviously this is the engine module. It's absolutely massive, but they use a lot more stuff in here, and you can do like conditional uh, adding of dependencies. You can see here they're only doing something if the platform's not HTML5, and Lots of things like this. So um, if you look through the engine modules, you can learn a lot more about how the build tool works. But if you just learn the stuff that I've described in this video, you will be a much better developer for it. And it'll probably save you quite a lot of headaches as well. Anyways, thank you very much for watching my video. If you want to support me, try out my course. It's really good. I, I think you'll like it. But uh, anyways, guys, thank you for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video.